This is Jane Thatcher, and you're listening to the Literati Records Podcast. This is episode 45 of the Literati Records podcast. I'm host of the show, Marcus, and I want to thank you for tuning in, turning on, and supporting independent music. I hope you've had a chance to get out this week and enjoy some of our great summer weather. We haven't spent too much time in the high 90s or the 100s, so get out there while it's still bearable. 
I am very stoked for this weekend, as it is once again time for the Westward Music Showcase, and a whole lot of local music. Any day I can catch a bunch of my favorite local artists live, and within walking distance of each other, hey, that's a great day in my opinion. Anyway, we have a few announcements to knock out, and then we'll get on into our feature. Still no word from our $100 monthly cash giveaway winner, Andrew Mills 990 If your email begins with Andrew Mills 990 send us an email from that account to literati at literatirecords.com and claim your $100 cash prize. If you'd like a shot at our $100 cash giveaway for June, get on over to our website at www.literatirecords.com and sign up for our email list. There are a few rules and guidelines listed with the form, so be sure to look those over as well. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. We mostly reserve our website for podcast posts and a few other pages, but Facebook and Twitter are where we like to interact more directly with the independent music community. And don't forget about email. You can always contact us at literati at literatirecords.com. Give us your feedback. Let us know about artists you think we should cover on the show. Or if you're in a band, send us a track for our local Mix Monday shows. Our guest on the show today is Jane Thatcher, an enchanting performer and songwriter whose genre-crossing music continues to draw praise locally and beyond. After completing a successful spring tour with friends and roadmates The Patient Zeros, Jane and her band plan to spend a bulk of the summer working on new music in preparation for a future release. You can find a complete track listing of today's music in the show notes on our website at www.literatirecords.com. We hope you enjoy getting to know Jane Thatcher. My guest on the show is Jane Thatcher, local Denver artist. How are you doing today, Jane? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. It's nice to be out here in the sun on a beautiful Colorado day. It is. It's beautiful out. Now, you're originally from Chicago, correct? I am actually originally from Salt Lake City. Oh. I spent about five years in Chicago playing music um, right before I got to Denver. And what brought you to Denver? You know, I'm pretty much a mountain girl through and through. I was raised in Salt Lake City and spent a lot of time outdoors. And um, I have two brothers that live in town, so I wanted to be back west, um, closer to family, closer to the outdoors. And there's a great music scene in Denver, so... There, that there is. Your music combines elements of folk, pop, some Americana, and you're a very talented singer-songwriter. Where do you draw your inspiration from? You know, I listen to a little bit of everything, which is probably why there's some uh, definition difficulties when it comes to my sound, but... Um, I, I've listened, I grew up on a lot of really classic folk, and I listened to a lot of John Denver and Paul Simon and Peter Paul and Mary growing up, um, so I think those roots are really strong there, and I listen to a lot of different styles and types of music, uh, which I think is really helpful for my songwriting, because it opens me up and uh, gives me interesting ideas, drawing from different genres. Now, I read that you put out your first release at 16. Did you know from a very young age that you wanted to pursue music? Uh, I knew at a very young age, and I think everybody else did, that I loved to perform and I loved music and I was very creative. Um, I started with piano probably in junior high and never practiced and drove my piano teacher crazy. And then I finally um, got into some guitar lessons. And when I was 16, I wrote one of the first songs that I'd written on the guitar, and I remember playing it for my guitar teacher. And he said, okay, here, put put the strap on your guitar, stand up here in the corner and sing that song to me again. And I sang it to him again and he said, you're a star, write 11 more songs, this is what you're meant to do. So, pretty much the clincher. Your voice seems to really draw people in, and you could go from a very delicate, breathy delivery to full voice, almost effortlessly. Mm-hmm. Have you had formal vocal training? I have had some formal vocal training. Um, when, I, when I very first started singing, I do have sort of a distinct voice. It's not um, necessarily a classically beautiful voice, I've never thought. Oh, so it's lovely. <laughs> thank Don't you. Kid yourself. Thank it's you. Lovely. Well, when I started, um, I felt like I needed some training and some help, so I took some voice lessons in junior high um, and high school, and I've also taken some lessons in the past few years, and also 
when I started writing music in high school, I just realized I would have to sing every day till I got the control and I got the tone and I got the sound that I wanted. So I spent a lot of time thinking about how to refine that instrument. I recently saw you live with your latest band lineup, and it was a great show. Thank you. Um, can you give us a rundown of who's in your band? You bet. Um, my The first to join was my bass player, Frank Pryor, um, who I met when I played a show down at Leon Art Gallery uh, here in Denver. Um, we started playing music together, and then I've been taking some jazz guitar lessons from my now guitar player, Mike Highland. Um, He's a great guitar player, and I asked him for some suggestions on players, and he brought along Andrew Hoyle, who is our percussionist, and Tom Gershwin, who is our trumpet player and our keyboard guy. And the three of them studied jazz together uh, here in Colorado. So it's been really fun getting to know those guys and playing with them. Really talented group of yeah. guys, too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I've been. It's, it's been great. They're great players, and they're wonderful people. They, they sound like they can almost play anything. I think they could. Yeah, I think they could. And it's always nice to have players who've played together before um, because they have the chemistry and they, you know, can read each other well. You can't teach chemistry. You, you, you sure can. <laughs> That's really awesome. At that show, you had people move the front tables back <laughs> so that people could get up and dance, mm -hmm. uh, which they definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> what does it give you as a performer when, when people get up and dance at your show? That's a great question. Um, I feel like when we're playing, um, especially when we're playing the more upbeat things, we let loose, we're, but we're also working hard and we're having a great time up there. And it, I think it's just really rewarding. It feels like people are engaged with your music. And when you ha are playing a song that has a beat that's very danceable, there's just a sense of success. Like, oh, I did it. I've been playing this song and the people are dancing. And so I've accomplished what I set out to do. I feel like a more intimate co connection a little bit. Definitely, definitely. I, I mean, it's nice to be able to elicit different sort of responses from your audience. And dancing is one of them that um, I'd love to be able to get the crowd to dance at every show. My mother was at that show. She was in town and uh, she's... You know, she's like the number one mom fan, and she loves to dance, and I learned everything that I know about dancing from her, so it was, it was particularly nice because she got to get up and, you know, boogie down. Right on. Yeah. Now, you did a short tour earlier this year with the Patient Zeros. Uh, do you have any plans to hit the road again this summer? Um, we are actually hunkering down a little bit to um, work on some new music and get a new recording out with my current band. So um, we're going to spend quite a bit of time in town this summer, but I'll probably get out to the West Coast in August. If you could join anyone on stage for a song, like anyone, oh. any artist, preferably living, but you okay. know, we'll, we'll make an exception in our make-believe okay. literati world here. Okay. Who would it be? I think that I would join Stevie Nicks on stage wow. because I I think she's got a fabulous, unique, interesting voice and I would love to sing a duet with her, sing some harmonies. Any one of her songs, I think her songwriting is great. So she would be some to her or Paul Simon. I know you said one, but Paul Simon is my favorite right. songwriter can, of all time right. and I love him and I also know every single one of his songs by heart so either one of those we'll let the three of you do like a trio thing together that's that sounds perfect <laughs> that sounds awesome. like a dream come true is what that sounds like <laughs> now i have your latest cd here what song would you like me to close our interview with um you can close our interview with the song unfurl unfurl mm -hmm. i will do that okay thanks for uh, taking the time to get together with us jane can't wait to catch you live again thanks so much Cellar by the sea There's lots of daisies You can step on instead of me When no one waits for you You lock up all your burdens In a cellar
Oh 